uh, here at Rackspace, we care a lot about the future of business. Where is it going? And what are the challenges to building a modern business that's going to you know, let us talk with uh, wearable computers like this Google Glass or all the new uh, technologies that are coming along? New Relic is one of those companies that developers use to watch the performance of their systems, but New Relic is becoming more than that. I wanted to meet the uh, CEO and find out what they're doing. So right now we're going to talk to New Relic. Who are you? My name is Lou Cerny, and I'm the founder and CEO of New Relic. And a little trivia is that's Lou Cerny and New Relic are anagrams of each other. So uh, people ask all the time where the name comes from. That's where it comes from. But uh, I've been passionate about building software ever since my parents gave me a computer in 1982. I was 12 years old, and it was a Commodore VIC-20. I don't know if you remember that. I computer. do. I was an Apple II guy. <laughs> oh, no. You, you had the Ferrari of uh, personal computers in 1982. Um, anyway, I, I, I fell in love with, with um, building things on computers. You know, I, I, I was, I've always been terrible at playing games, but I liked building games. Um, and so, you know... We should have hung out in high school because totally. I, I like playing games and not building them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, so back in the day, those games were like Space Invaders, and Missile Command, and stuff like that. So I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd try to write Missile Command. Choplifter. Uh, top lifter, nice, nice. <laughs> anyway, um, so, so uh, that's what I've always loved to do, and, and um, so I love building software and building great companies. And um, uh, so I've been uh, an, an, a professional engineer since uh, about uh, '92, and uh, I've been an entrepreneur, founder since two, uh, since '98. Yeah. And uh, New Relic's my second company. And we've spent a little bit of time at New Relic, but it's been a couple of years, I think. It's yeah, been a while. It has. What, what is New Relic, and, and who, who should care about New Relic? Uh, New Relic is a software analytics company. And what does that mean? Well, we make sense out of billions of metrics about millions of applications running in production. And who cares about that? Well, it turns out like virtually every business is a software business. And yeah. uh, you know we do believe with believe in Andreessen's article that software is eating the world. So if you have software in your business, you need to understand what that software is doing in production. Um, and historically, New Relic has been world class at making sense of the performance and availability of software in production. Uh, as you know, software is complex. Um, serving up web pages is complex. Building iPhone apps that are snappy and responsive, that's hard to do. Yeah. Um, and we provide the visibility that helps our, our customers, our developers, understand where there are problems, what are the root cause of problems, and how do you improve the customer experience. Um, but what we recognize is that the raw data coming out of live applications can are, are, are essential to keeping an app running. But the future of New Relic is about also looking at what other business problems can be solved with that kind of data as well. And I, it, when I visited you a, a year or two ago, um, we talked about, oh, it, you know, New Relic wa lets me watch my system. So if I check in code, I can watch, did that code break something? Did it, right. did it slow down the system? Did it speed it up? Did I get the desired result? And how is that being delivered worldwide, right? And yes. Because, you know, how a customer in India sees my app is quite different than somebody in San Francisco, right? Absolutely. And, and you know, the problem that we're solving in that area is only getting more difficult and more important um, to address. If you think about it, uh, companies are now deploying changes in production dozens of times a day. If you yeah. look at a company like a customer of ours, GitHub, for example, every time somebody, one of their 100 plus engineers changes code and checks that in, that's a change that goes straight to production. And so therefore, you need constant visibility into what's the impact of all that change. You know, the stuff that worked an hour ago may not be the stuff that's in production today. And then you combine that with the fact that people are using your app all over the world in different ways. If there's one thing that's unpredictable, it's usage on the internet. Yeah. So, so that's why you need this kind of visibility that's real time and very deep. Uh, and, uh, and so, you know, as a bit of history, I actually, the last company I founded, Wiley Technology, kind of created this category of software of production, software visibility, and that, that company, Wiley Technology, is, is still a successful business, is part of a CA uh, company now. Um, but um, 
that's kind of the first generation where it's on premise and it's classic enterprise software, yep. you know, delivered at a very high price point um, with direct sales. Um, with New Relic, we wanted to democratize this. We wanted to make a, a product that was more sophisticated and yet easier to use, um, and make it so affordable that anybody who has a has a piece of business software, um, it's a no-brainer to use our, our software. Well, I think I, that's why I like you because, uh, you know, in the in the San Francisco gold rush in the 1800s, yeah. you know, people who really made the money were weren't the miners out digging for gold. It was yeah. the uh, Studebakers and the Levi Strausses and the and the Bank of Americas that served or the Wells Fargo's that served those miners, right? And you're you're taking I'm seeing a worldwide yeah. thing because starting a company is getting cheaper and easier. Right? Yes. You, you can pull out an iPhone or an Android mm -hmm. phone, you know, and start up a couple cloud servers and you're in business. Right, 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 right. <laughs> That's quite a bit different than it was ten years ago. Right? Well, we, we see a big opportunity for a company and we've got a lot to do to fully, you know, become like, you know, the, the Levi's or, or like the railroad provider that um, capitalizes on this worldwide market shift towards software dr driving business, right? So we've got an opportunity there. We've got a lot to prove on being, you know, um, one of the great companies. But we think that we're lucky to have that opportunity. Um, so we're investing heavily in R&D. Uh, we are not stopping on where we, on, on resting on our laurels at all. Um, you know, as an example, as somebody who loves to build software and I, I want this to be in the core of the company, actually, starting tomorrow, I'm going to be off the grid for the next four weeks building the next product. Writing code, you know, doing, you know, building software that services our next big opportunity. And you know, if you interviewed a CEO of a 300-person tech company 10 years ago, they probably wouldn't be spending their August writing code. They'd be, you know, if they wanted a new growth initiative, they'd be shopping for companies. Yeah. Right. And I'm not saying we'll never buy companies, but we prefer to innovate from within, and that starts from me on down. That's that's awesome. Um, so what is, you know, New Relic back then was, well, what, how, do, how do was a developer who's starting a company and yeah. starting up a few servers on Rackspace Cloud or Amazon yeah. or something, how do they use New Relic and what does it show them? Well, we work very hard on making it very simple. Uh, people starting companies are people who write code professionally for a living. They don't have much time. Yeah. So we wanted to make it super easy to get that kind of visibility. And so what you do is you sign up for a New Relic account and then you download our little piece of software called our agent and you just link it into your application without changing any source code. You just drop it in and you redeploy it. We've got an agent for server-side applications in virtually every language, Java, PHP, .NET, uh, Ruby, Python, and Node coming. Um, but we also have an agent for iOS and Android. So you just drop in our agent and wherever your app lives and redeploy it. And that's like, you know, that's a one minute process. And then all of a sudden the lights are turned on. You can see everything that's yeah. going on. And, and because we're a software as a service, um, that agent just reports into New Relic. And we make, as I said at the beginning, we make sense of an enormous amount of data. So we're collecting 120 billion metrics a day off our customers' apps. But the hard part is synthesizing that into something that just makes sense so you don't need to go through an intense training process to understand your application. It just works. I, you know, I walk into a lot of startups and they have, uh, a lot of them have New Relic running on the wall. Yeah, yeah. You know, I call it a, a, a data porn wall or, a, <laughs> or they, you know, yeah. uh, they're, they're using it to watch the systems. Yes. And so new, what, what would, what would a, a, a startup want on that wall? What, what would they look for inside New Relic and what, what are they putting up so that the entire team can see, oh, our, our systems are all working great? Well, I, you know, maybe it's now a good time to sort of show what, what yeah. sorts of things show up on the wall. So um, this, is, um, this is an example, oh my goodness. Um, that's an example of our app being down right now, which I haven't seen in a long time. So this is what you get when you do a live demo. Let's see what's going on with New Relic right now. Somebody made a deployment and there is a production issue. So the good news is our software is detecting it. Uh, the bad news is that um, on, on, uh, on live recording, I'm showing an issue in our software. Um, so but this is, what, this is this the value is, of this. This is the value is we know what's going on. Our engineers are on it right now. And, and uh, we, we can dig right into it. And just to sort of show you on a high level like how rare this is, let's show a report on our, on our, um, on our SLA to sort of show you know, where our availability has been for the last um, six or seven weeks so we see you know 99.95 is the worst week um and uh uh up to up till pretty recently so 
um, we, we make sense of all this data, we show how it's going, and then we can, we can dig into not only what's going on on the server side, but also on mobile activity. So we've, we've got a mobile app. So your, your site is down right now, and I, I, yeah. I bet you're probably <laughs> thinking about, well, I, who do I yell at? Yeah. But I, I'm sure your development team's on top of it. They're on it. What, what, will they, what will they see in that red block to help them figure out what to do? Because this is real, real way, world real and how business world. Work. So, so first of all, I can tell right away that it's a deployment. As I say, production is changing all the time, and we're no exception to that. So, yep. let's look at what happened. Um, okay, deployment went happened um, just as the interview started, um, and we see an immediate um, slowdown in request queuing and database time, it correlating with the red bar being an outage. Yeah. So, what's interesting here is. Request queuing is time spent waiting to, for, for an available Ruby process to generate a web request. So that's going way up. It means we've run out of capacity. But what I also see right away is if I hide that, I see database spiked. Yeah. So I haven't even left the first page yet, and I know I've got a database problem that's related to production change. Probably some code that's using the database in a different way. Uh, I'm doing this live. I don't know uh, um, what we're going to see here, but let's see if we get some more information by clicking on the database segment. We see right away um, our selects and our, um, our actually our non-select, our sort of other statements, are, are going through the roof. In fact, I can see the exact query. Here we are. We've got an 80-second query that just came in that is almost certainly the cause of the problem. Here's the stack trace of the code. Um, so th this code called this select statement, which is now impacting our production site. So in, in three clicks, we know what's going on. We'll roll it back, or we'll fix the query to get the site back up. Um, the point is, our customers use this software every day. You know, absent this, how would we find out about it? Well, um, probably through angry, angry phone calls, tweets, something like that. And then there's just, uh, well, you know, did someone deploy to production? Well, if deployments are constant, you don't know, you know, if the deployment caused it. You don't know if it's related to the database. It could have been somebody tweaked a setting on a server or any other number of things. Um, and, and so you're stuck with guesswork. Um, with New Relic, you've got that real visibility that takes the guesswork out and, you know, you can diagnose a problem in a couple clicks. Now, this is really cool. And so that person who just checked in, that code can uncheck it out and uh, the system will... And his code is now available for everyone to see here on, on, on your show to show, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's one way to make sure people are, are careful with what they put into production is... Uh, um, it might show up on your show if, if not. <laughs> but this is this is how the real world business works, right? Yeah. Because, you know, if you're a Procter and Gamble or General Motors or Toyota or Union Pacific, right? They're putting uh, software in the rail. They're putting sensors in the rails that are good, that are watched by software. Yes. And if those if that software starts going down for some reason, you need to know how to fix it and what went wrong and, and totally all that totally. stuff. Totally. It's 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 well. Think about it this way. Um, you know, financial markets are very mature, right? And, and so in that, um, there have been decades of, you know, that's just why there's, there's generally extended, uh, accepted accounting principles and there's analysts that know what metrics to look for to understand the value of a business or assess the value of business, things like that. But imagine trying to assess whether you should invest in a company if you had no data about that company, if you didn't know whether their sales were increasing or whether their, their gross margins. So basically, we're bringing that level of maturity to software, which is a, a newer thing to really assess the health of. You know, people can assess the health of companies by looking at their financials. Um, so, so we're taking that kind of best practice of what do you measure, how do you present it, so that people can assess health and then take action when there's, when there are, there's poor health. Every software system needs that, and therefore every business needs it. Yeah. Um, how much does this cost uh, an average, let's say, let's say startup? Yeah. How, how does, so how do, how so do we've got that? a variety of product levels depending on um, the type of business you're in and, and where you're at. Um, uh, first off, if you're a Rackspace cloud customer, you can get the New Relic standard product for free, unlimited. That's nice. So, and that's a normal value of uh, $49 a month um, or uh, per server, or $24 a month per server on a, uh, if you commit to a year. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that's a significant value for, you know, value add for being a Rackspace customer. Um, and uh, we happen to have that with some other partners as well. Um, and then our professional product, um, which gives a higher level of depth of visibility, some of the features I show to get right to the pinpoint of the cost, that's $120 a month per server um, on an annual plan. Um, and uh, you know, if you've got a large number of servers, then our sales team 
definitely will talk to you and work out a plan that works yeah. for you. Because, um, so if you're in Adobe and you have 20,000 servers or something, right, then right. Pro probably talk to your sales team. That's an, uh, that is a precise example of a customer. Adobe is a customer that has a large number of servers, and it's, you know, it's a negotiated thing depending on their environment, the type of servers you're running on, that sort of thing. Um, and so you know, while we've got you know, 50,000 accounts using New Relic, um, many of them small startups, um, and th I love that about our companies that we help small startups be successful and build great companies. Um, but we also have household name companies um, um, like Comcast and Nike and Disney and, um, and, and, and some newer like successful companies that are kind of broken out like Airbnb and Groupon. Th these companies like, you, you know, there are that kind of, um, not only on the big screen at, uh, you know, in, in their lobbies, but also on developers' desktops to keep an eye on production. Yeah. How, how is New Relic changing now, and what are you thinking about for the next month? Because you're taking a month off the of code. Yeah, right? well, you know, <laughs> I kind of think of it as, um, it's kind of like when the artist goes into the studio to create a new album. You've got some general idea, but you don't know until the end of the month whether you just, like, you know, wasted a month trying to, you know, trying to come up with, but I'm trying to create something new, right? Yeah. Um, uh, in general, my habits and my preferences are to build new categories of software. So there was no such thing as application performance management or production visibility for software when I started um, my last company, Wiley. And then there was nothing like um, doing it in a SaaS model with new SaaS model with new relic. And so that created a whole new market. So. Yeah. Um, what we'll do next, I, I, I think, is going to be something that you can't say, oh, it's like this other company. They do the same thing. Um, but but I want to leverage a lot of the assets that New Relic has. New Relic is very good at collecting an enormous amount of data from applications, doing it in a secure way so that our customers are confident that their data is in a, in a secure place and it's well managed, um, doing it um, reliably, et cetera. Um, and, and we have presence in, as I say, millions of applications in handsets and on servers. Yep. So um, I think there is more value we can do with the data we collect provide to our customers. I, we never want to be in the business of providing the data the customers send us to anyone else. So we don't yeah. want to be like, you know, data Yeah, because you don't want somebody to look at your source code. No, no, or, or even the aggregate, you know. Um, uh, you know, we, we prefer to um, just be providing our customers value by giving them insights into what their software is doing. And, and the difference is going to be we're going to answer business questions as opposed to just availability questions. Well, and, and that was where I was trying to go because yeah. uh, since starting this company, I've seen you on sp stages all over the world and you meet with lots of interesting customers from yeah. startups to big companies. What are you seeing happen in business? What, what do you think is the trend that, um, you know, that you're trying to stay ahead of? Or, you know, I'm writing a book on the yeah. age of context, so I'm yeah. seeing wearables and sensors and sure, sure. Know, that's, that's social data is going crazy and location data is going crazy. And so that means that there's a new world that's possible. Well, I think the business world is rightfully getting excited about using data to make better decisions as opposed to using opinion or emotion to make better decisions. Um, and sometimes you do need, there, I'm not saying there's no place for gut feel because at the end of the day, there's something about the gut that can make, especially when it's like on things like people or key hires. Um, but there's a lot of business decisions, very important business decisions that need to be made with, with the help of data that aren't being made with adequate or well, well collected or well presented data. And so there are many, many companies doing things in and around that, you know, on, on, on one end you've got companies like Informatica and Tableau, and you know, which re recently went public, kind of servicing at the C level. Um, but I think there are opportunities for, and, and of course the, the, the quote big data companies and companies like uh, Hortonworks and Cloudera um, doing, you know, making an investment in Hadoop to, as a key part of that. Um, I think New Relic has a place somewhere in and around that space. Uh, because at the end of the day, What's the raw data that people are analyzing? It's usually raw data that's coming out of live software. Yeah. It's not from handwritten surveys. Nope. It's from somebody bought something online, and what did they do before they bought something online? Yeah. Where did they come from? How did they leave? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and so our unique um, value add is being present to watch, observe those transactions, observe the performance of them, and, and, and deliver some insights that can help the business grow. Uh, I call that contextual business because the more you know about your customer, the better you can serve them. And yeah. we, we see lots of examples. I live right by the Half Moon Bay Ritz, and they have yeah. four systems, IT systems, right? Open, ta open Table runs their computer mm -hmm. uh, for the restaurant, you know, opens 
runs their restaurant and Spa Finder runs their spa and they have other systems that run their hotel and stuff like that. None of which are talking to each other, none of which are really particularly modern for this yes. new wearable world where I'm going to talk right. to it. So uh, you get to watch data from a lot of systems. What, what are you noticing about the world that's changing over the last time I talked to you, I guess? Well, I'm amazed at what mobile is doing to transform the world, and that's not much of a surprise now, but some of our biggest customers are companies like Uber, OpenTable is another one, um, uh, Path. I mean, there's a lot of New Relic customers that are mobile-first companies. Um, and uh, um, what surprised me is that prior to New Relic's first mobile monitoring product that came out in February, there was zero visibility into whether those mobile apps were performing. So, 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 so think about it. Um, if you stand in line at a Starbucks, and it's you know there's 20 people in front of you, what are they all doing? Staring at their phone, right? Yep. Now, I think you've got about six seconds inside an app max of waiting time before you say, I'm gone from that app. You fire up and you want to check your mail or look at your Twitter stream. If, 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 if you've got more than six seconds, um, and, and, and you haven't really kind of bought into the app yet, if you're just using it casually and it's slow, you're not going to use it again. Yep. Might as well not have even built the thing, right? So yep. imagine that. You spend all this time engineering an app, and then you release it to your customers, and you don't know if it's even performing. Yep. Uh, so, so New Relic's um, capitalizing on that by you know, having the first product that will put visibility into the performance of that mobile app. And because that mobile app is almost always talking to software on the back end, yep. like if you look at OpenTable, when you make a reservation on OpenTable, you need to see how long it take on the phone, and was there a problem in the database in the back end? Yeah. Right, and, and we see all of that now. Yeah. So, so that's an important trend. And then these systems are becoming more interconnected. Um, and so... Yeah, um, we, we just talked to MindTouch, and he said that he built his entire company to be API'd so that uh, another system can talk to it, and he can hook up to SAP and other systems, Salesforce, absolutely. and bring data into his system, right? That's, and that's increasingly, you know, I'd say the, the thing started to explode when the Facebook graph got exposed as a public web service API, and all of a sudden people said, I can transform my business by really doing a meaningful integration with live web services. Um, <clears throat> and, and now these live web, there's, there's you know, hundreds of important live web services that apps need to rely on to function. Yeah. Um, and so you need to understand your dependency on not only what's inside your data center or in the cloud, portion of cloud that you, you have responsibility for and versus external systems. And uh, you know, we happen to be very good at that. Can you, uh, you know, um, back when cloud was first starting up and, and I was talking to developers at Microsoft, they were thinking about, we were eventually gonna know the cost of writing a line of code, you know, because uh, it's gonna, it's gonna, if you have a million customers, it's gonna need so much compute, and it's gonna need so much uh, uh, right. bandwidth, and it's gonna right. need so much uh, storage space to make that line of code access. A have we gotten anything close to that where we can start analyzing the cost of the systems that we're building, the potential um, cost? Because for a startup, that's really, you know, it's like how much money am I gonna need to raise to keep the system running, you know? If I get to a million or a hundred million users, you know? Um, my experience in software is that you're not going to know the general cost to run a system until you, until you start seeing it run with real production load. And so the best practice that I recommend is um, build deep monitoring like what New Relic offers into your strategy to understand and manage your cost of growth on the infrastructure side. Yeah. Um, so as I said, um, we collect an enormous amount of data, 110 billion, 120 billion metrics a day. Um, uh, but it's a small deployment. Our, our hosting bill is 3% of revenues. Um, most SaaS companies, their hosting bill can be 10, 15% of revenues. Well, how did we manage to be so efficient in collecting so much data on a s relatively small number of servers? We started from the ground at looking what New Relic told us where the bottlenecks were and designing for efficiency in the key parts of the system rather than define, you know, you can't pre-design for efficiency without understanding how the system behaves in production and under real load. Um, and we provide that, that information that helps us not only fix problems, but design a system for scale. And that, that's bottom line efficiency of the business, right? If we can 
if we can cut our hosting bill in half because we run on half the number of needed servers, yeah. that's straight to the bottom line. Um, and, and so that, that, that's a meaningful business impact. If you're sitting down with a CTO of a startup or a big company, what kinds of things do you, would you want them to measure about their business to get to that point where you really understand what resources are needed and what's happening in the system? You know, it really just comes down to understanding your transaction mix. Um, you know, if you've, you know, let's say you've got, uh, you're an e-commerce site, and you want to, you, you've got 400,000 users on the site, you want to get to 4 million. Well, understanding what percentage of those users are browsing versus buying versus um, putting things in carts. And what's, uh, um, you know, how do you want that transaction, transaction mix to grow in the future? And then um, what's the, what is the, um, infrastructure required to support that trans transaction mix at scale. And then kind of predicting, you know, early on you can just sort of say, well, if I want to double the throughput, I'm just going to double the amount of hardware if, if I'm at capacity right now. But, uh, you know, there comes a point when you need to break things down or, you know, go from vertical to horizontal scaling or what have you where you need to reassess some fundamental design decisions. And, and the data that New Raleigh provides ought to to help you make your judgment calls on when you should do that yeah. um, and so it, it really does kind of I mean like designing software is hard and and software developers um, um, you know they do meaningfully important and hard work and so we're not just a magic wand that will make that you know a, a, a trivial problem to solve but what they often lack is good data to make the right decisions yeah. that can project for example cost of running the business well you, you were talking about conversion rates of an e-commerce site yeah. Can New Relic can watch the performance of the system? Did the yeah. page get loaded fast? Right. But can you also correlate that to conversion rates, or are you watching conversion rates? Or I business, think that's an opportunity for us. In other words, business metrics, not just speed of page loads. And that's stuff like that. that's the type of opportunity we think we've got a large. So that's future your next in. month, huh? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, you know, it really is like the artist going to the studio. It's like I think I know what song I'm going to write, but then at the end of the month, it's like I wrote something entirely different, and yeah. you know, I went in with a guitar and I came out with a piano. Um, but uh, there's something there. There's yeah. something there, you know, understanding whether a faster, how much, how much having a faster site improves the conversion rate or the health of yeah. the business. Um, and what about feature use as, as it relates to, you know, if su a subset mm -hmm. of your customers are spending a lot um, on your site, is it based on what features they use or what time of day they log in or, you know, who knows? The contextual customer knowing the context of why somebody got to the, that decision or how they got there and how it was affected is really important. I, that might yeah. affect your marketing mix, yes. right? Yes. If you know that everybody you know, yeah. came from YouTube and yeah. clicked on an ad and they're the ones that are buying, that, that might make you spend more on YouTube, right? Absolutely, on Twitter absolutely, absolutely. Those, those kinds of insights we think are a potentially available from the data we collect um, and can change the vector of your business. Interesting. Um, you know, it, I was talking to Factual CEO, and he, he runs uh, the location systems underneath Yelp and um, Apple and uh, other, other companies, Foursquare, stuff like that. Yeah. And we talked about how much the infrastructure has changed in the last five years. Uh, he's using Mongo now, and he's using XYZ new yeah. technology. Yeah. Tell me how you see the technology stack changing, and where, What's trendy right now, I guess? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, if you're, if you're, uh, what, what things are coming on that's hot that you didn't see a year ago? Or? Well, uh, I'm going to back it up to a macro trend. Okay. It's not like, oh, Node is hot and, um, you know, .NET isn't or vice versa. It's more what is an irreversible trend in my mind is this proliferation of different, techno different development languages, programming stacks, frameworks, databases. Yeah, and Zoho CEO just yeah. told me they're standardizing on Go, and we had yeah. a big argument last night here in the lobby about I, I think those religious wars aren't very <laughs> fruitful as to which, which language is better. It's, I, I do believe in the whole right, right tool for the job. Yeah. Um, so, but that drives our strategy. So, Does um, New Relic help you figure out? Yeah, what I want to go, so, well, uh, no, what New Relic has done is we're the first monitoring platform as a service. And what I mean by that is, um, last month we announced the New Relic platform with 45 plugins, um, including one from Rackspace, that cover the entire environment. 
So we have a plugin to monitor MongoDB, Redis, React. We've got a plugin for Apache Web Server, Rackspace load balancers, EC2 usage. And, and so, and we're giving that away for free. Anyone can build a plugin and anyone can download that plugin and, and run it in New Relic with trivial setup cost. So I can show you an example of yeah. one of our customers, um, or well, in our own environment. Um, let's look at our MySQL activity. We've got a MySQL plugin. So these are our, our production MySQL databases and how many queries per second and what's going on in any one of them. And we've got this nice user interface that, again, we had this database problem show up pretty recently. So we see yep. the spike in database activity, you know, proving, again, that we see in the database something that correlates with what we saw inside, um, inside the app. We can also look at our F5 load balancers. Um, so, so anyway, these particular tabs down here, these are all plugins in the New Relic platform. And I think we're now at about 65 plugins that have been built by, by the community in, in a platform that's less than uh, a month old. So, so um, that's a game changer, right? Yeah. And you, you, you can't, because we're entirely delivered as a service, whereas the rest of the people in the kind of monitoring industry are still doing on-premise, there could be this platform, then some, some guy at, you know, at Airbnb creates something to monitor Mongo. How does he share it with somebody at another company? Well, you gotta kind of do this manual installation of third-party code, and how do you keep it up to date? Well, that's all done through the SaaS model, so it's just, it's trivially, easy. Once you press publish on your plugin, it's available to New Relic's 50,000 customers. Um, so we think that, that that's, that's like the future of monitoring. Um, but it all starts with the application. That's why you know, our business model is to charge on the application and give away everything else. No, that's really brilliant. Um, so that's radically changing what kinds of things you can watch. As we developer. watch everything in the production environment now. Yeah. That th this is a game changer for us, and, and uh, we think the New Relic platform is uh, going to be something where, you know, so a year and a half ago, we originally thought, let's do something for MySQL. And then we thought, well, what portion of our customer base doesn't benefit from MySQL? Um, so you, you, and so we decided instead of putting that R&D into doing one thing at a time, let's build the platform and have our community build the plugins for whatever they want. So I bet you have analytics on all those plugins, right? Yes. Because uh, you know how popular my, my SQL is. Yes. And you know how it happens to be our most popular plugin. Probably still. is. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but we absolutely know what, what numbers 2 through 10 are. So can you build a chart of over time, over the next two years, of how popular Mongo is versus MySQL? In our customer base, yes. And are you sharing that in the public? It, it, can, can people watch that? You know, and, or are you going to... We every, haven't decided what to do with it yet. Yeah. That sounds that like a great blog this, post. Yeah, it is. That <laughs> strikes like me as the post. sort of thing we ought to share, but before we make a decision like that, we have to be very thoughtful yeah. about anything we do with the data we collect. Right? So something as, um, you know, there is no harm, I think, in sharing, you know, with the, with the appropriate, you know, description of here's how we collect our data. This is reported off a New Relic customer sending in. And by the way, the number one plugin is MySQL. I, I, I have to imagine we're going to do that, but I just want to be clear. We're very deliberate about sharing anything yeah. um, you know, with anyone but, our, but the customer's own data back to themselves. Are you seeing any trends in the, in the first month that you found shocking or interesting? Because or? Um, you have 65 it's so new, early. new plugins. I mean, the, the cool thing is like 20 plugins in, in one month um, you know, for a monitoring product. Um, you know, we've basically got remarkable coverage of the environment. So that's, the breadth is the, the important trend. Um, and, you know, over a 30-day period, the numbers aren't moving too much. It, it, we need a longer period to kind of say, oh, this is like, you know, Cassandra's really moving on, moving, getting, getting ahead of steam or something like that. We don't know. Uh, it's too early to tell. Interesting. But uh, over the next year, that'll be an interesting thing to check back with you on and see if you're learning something about the development environment that yeah. you, you weren't uh, expecting to learn, I guess. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Which is always fun. It when is. You, when you build platforms, you don't know how people are going to use it or, and what's gonna, what you're going to learn from building that, right? That's right, that's right. That's the exciting thing about it. And, and the other cool thing about it is, um, because of the nature of our business, virtually every one of our 50,000 customers um, have one or more developers, right? Yeah. So our customers 
um, our users are developers. So every one of them is a plug in, a potential plug in builder. Yeah. Um, and that's and that an interesting question. Are you, can the development team track anything by the person, by the code, the person who's checking in the code? Yes. Can, like that guy who checked in that code, is he going to get a little red mark on his name? Uh, and you're going to know who's, well, there, you who, know, who I, writes clean code and who breaks bills, you know? <laughs> and Microsoft, we used to have signs around the, uh, the Windows team, don't break the bill, you know? <laughs> there are various ways to motivate developers, and we, you know, we, we like to motivate by encouraging, I prefer the carrot to the stick. But the yeah. point is, we certainly can see who made check-ins, who made changes, and, and correlate that with, um, you know, who to go to to ask for help on a production issue. Right. Um, and, and that's... Can you use that though to have a little, hey, you haven't checked in code for three months. What's going on? Are you, you know... And yeah, I mean like... Maybe you are working on a bigger project off to the side, not No, we don't, we don't observe the, the, the commit history. Like, you know, I, I would think that a company like GitHub or, or Atlassian is better suited to looking at like, you know, the code history on a, on a per developer basis and not only how often they check in, but how complex their code is, whereas, um, you know, what, you know, what's the history of unit test failures by developer, things like that. Um, again, uh, I personally wouldn't be excited about building an engineering culture that was too obsessed on that sort of stuff because I think you can mess it up pretty easily, but um, there's certainly some opportunities to do more with data around what code is being checked in. What, what other companies around you are doing interesting work? Because you, you were, are, you know, you're, you're partnering with a lot of companies like Rackspace and Amazon and so forth, but you're also watching a, a lot of things that are affecting the developer team. Are, are you seeing anybody doing interesting work, not as a competitor, but as yeah. somebody in the ecosystem? Um, well, I've always had a lot of respect for GitHub and how they've managed to build a product that just, you know, like almost overnight, um, you know, created a whole new way of sharing source and advertising yourself to the rest of the developer community. You know, the, you know the, the the LinkedIn profile in a way as being uh, for developers is being supplanted by the the, the GitHub homepage, um, and so I've got a lot of respect for them. I've always had a lot of respect for Atlassian, which has got, it's got some overlap with GitHub, but uh, a bit more of a broader view in their product portfolio and the fact that Atlassian built an amazing business, essentially bootstrap for their first like eight years, um, on the backs of just high quality software that was easy to buy and use. Um, so, um, we, you know, those are companies we like a lot and uh, partner with. Um, and then, uh, you know, on on the mobile side, you know, there's um, StackMob and Parse and a few of these other companies that are doing um, interesting things um, uh, to make it easier to build mobile apps and, you know, take some of the burden of server-side logic off of the mobile app developer. And that, that's why they're important partners with us in our mobile product initiative. Very cool. Where do I learn more about uh, New Relic? You go to newrelic.com, yeah. and uh, it's free to try, 14-day uh, free trial. And if you don't want to, you don't want to pay, or it's not the right time to pay, you've, you've got our light product for free forever. So um, there's really no reason not to give it a try. Um, we think that. Let me just leave you with this: as a software developer, um, I know that for me personally, I think for our customers there's a very special feeling of seeing your software run in production, yeah. right? It's, it's your baby. You put your heart and soul into building this stuff and you want to see it work in the real world. You want to see the real user is looking at a web page or clicking on that button or doing that cool thing with my software. And it really puts, shines a light on that and it illuminates it. It shows the grace and motion of, of the, the work that you've, you know, without that you, you, you've got like green lights for unit test passing, but you don't have a sense of who's using my software and yeah. what's their experience like. And that's why I think our customers love what we do is because it helps them connect with their greatest work. Um, and we just want to continue to do that for our customers. Very cool. Thanks so much for coming in and All right. uh, talking about what you're learning from the platform that you just shipped. It's, oh, really it's, cool. it's a pleasure. Great to see you. Thank you so thanks. much. And thanks for what you do for our customers as well. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure to partner with you guys. Thanks.